Notes calling from James Comey. Some news organizations pouncing on the damning evidence, others on the lack of criminal charges, and some pundits slamming the FBI director. Plus, Donald Trump slashing his number of TV interviews and denouncing what he sees as unfair coverage, especially on CNN. These are sick people. They're bad people. They're bad people. And what you do is don't watch CNN anymore. I don't watch it anymore. I'm Howard Kurtz, and this is Media Buzz. The protests in Dallas were proceeding peacefully when a black army veteran who later proclaimed he wanted to kill white police officers started doing just that. The demonstrations taking place across the country Thursday night were in response to two earlier tragedies. The first, the fatal police shooting of Alton Sterling, a black man who was selling CDs outside of Baton Rouge Market, causing a media outcry because it was captured on video. Tonight, the new and chilling video, the deadly police shooting. The Justice Department on the case, officers wrestling with a man on the ground, then firing multiple times. Tonight, his 15-year-old son breaking down. That was followed a day later by another fatal police shooting in Minnesota, where a black resident named Philando Castillo was killed during a traffic stop, while the horrifying video was shot by his girlfriend in the car, and live streamed on Facebook. It's happened again. Well, to get his hand out. For the second time in two days, a black man is shot dead by the police, and again, there is video evidence. Good evening. For a second day in a row, we have been confronted by graphic images of a man dying after being shot by police under questionable circumstances. Joining us now to analyze the coverage of these awful events, Heidi Persmella, senior political reporter for USA Today. Kelly Goff, a Daily Beast columnist and host of WNYC Radio's Political Party. Lisa Booth, columnist for the Washington Examiner and a Republican strategist. And Molly Ball, political reporter for The Atlantic. Kelly Goff, do you see a shift in tone, a little bit of a lowering of the temperature in the way the media are covering both the massacre in Dallas and these two fatal police shootings? In a word, yes. I mean, this has obviously been an incredibly tragic week for our country, Howard, but if there's any sort of silver lining, if one can call it that, is that the media coverage this week has been much more responsible than it has for previous incidents, and that's across the board. For instance, you saw, in, in terms of conservative media, you saw Kim Edwards, the host of NRA Radio, saying, "Where isn't there? why isn't there more outrage about the fact that Philando Castile was a, a, a licensed gun owner here? Why hasn't there been more defense? He's credited with actually pushing the NRA to come out and talk about that. Hot Air condemned the killing of of Alton Sterling. Those are conservative outlets. And in terms of uh, liberal outlets, you've also seen more responsibility. There was actually another police shooting that took place in New York. The reason that hasn't gotten as much coverage is because the person involved in that shooting is alleged to have assaulted the officer. For that reason, it wasn't lumped into the coverage of Philando Castile and Alton Sterling. So there's more responsibility we're seeing on both sides, I think. Heidi, on the other hand, we had the New York Post cover the morning after Dallas. Civil War put that up, and we also had a report, a headline on the Drudge Report, the Civil War, Black Lives Kill. So some of this has been pretty inflammatory stuff. But that is why it got so much attention, because to Kelly's point, there were relatively few headlines like that that were sensationalistic. For the most part, I felt that, I agree, the media gave a pretty sober assessment in the aftermath of this, and I'm going to do something unusual, which is credit in part the politicians, because on what day do you see Hillary Clinton, Paul Ryan, and Donald Trump, at least initially, mm -hmm. give a very similar response to this? And I think that the media kind of took their cue from that. But I'll tell you what we need more of. I saw on this network, network actually, Greta Van Susteren and her broadcast, both paying proper tribute to the law officers and focusing on the egregious nature of this, while at the same time, reading a statement from Black Lives Matter and trying to make the point that condemnation, whether it's you know Black Lives Matter protesters condemning all police or, um, or partisans sensationalizing Black Lives Matter is exactly the kind of intolerance that has gotten us to this place. So I was heartened to see newscasters like her try to focus on both sides. Mr. Booth, it seems usually after every shooting that we have a whole lot of media finger pointing and we played a little bit of that. My sense is that Kelly's writing, there seems to be less of that this time. What do you think? Well, I sincerely hope that's the case. I, mean, I think what we've seen and, and why you see public polling and only 6% of the, the public has full confidence in the media. And that's because we've seen individuals in the media service propagandists as opposed to the truth tellers that they're supposed to be. And I was watching 
uh, CNN this morning on State of the Union, and I saw the chief of police, David Brown, who's done an outstanding job in being a leader, not rushing to politicizing this. In Dallas. And really, yeah, and as well as Mike Rawlings, the, the mayor there, and both calling for peace and bringing communities together, having these honest conversations that need to happen. And he himself 